Okay, morning all. Uh, welcome to another spot of CUDA. Uh, so today we'll start looking at some of the um, GPU accelerated libraries that come with CUDA. So CUDA is actually a pretty rich environment and when you download CUDA, uh, you actually get a bunch of really cool libraries to use as well, which can make um, GPU accelerated algorithms and, and just general CUDA programming much, much easier. Uh, so we'll have a look at uh, one of those. Uh, in particular today. Here's just a few of the standard libraries that you get with CUDA. So Thrust, this would be what we look at a bit of uh, today. So this is a library of algorithms and data structures for many different common things like your sorting and your scanning. And uh, it's a CUDA implementation of the C++ STL library, or STL I should say. Yeah, so anybody that's coded C++ for a little while is probably familiar with STL. Uh, Qrand, all right, this is a classic. Qrand is classic. Um, this provides pseudo random number generators for use by the host and the GPU. So, this is really, really cool. If you've got like um, a simulation, maybe you're doing with the GPU, and you're simulating a bunch of objects, maybe some of your objects need some sort of randomness to their behavior. Um, Qrand is really, really good for that. Um, okay, Qblas or Qblas. Uh, this is a CUDA implementation of the BLAST library, or Basic Linear Algebra Subroutines. Uh, we also got the QFFT for the Fast Fourier Transform, and there's a bunch more too. Uh, there's not actually that many more standard CUDA libraries that come with the CUDA download, but there is you know, a lot of libraries out there written by other people. Alrighty, but on to the main crux of today. Um, today we're going to be looking at the Thrust library. We're just introducing it, I guess. It's, uh, it's pretty big. It's a big library, but we'll just sort of scratch the surface today. Um, Thrust, like I said a minute ago, is um, the standard template library for C++, only um, it's CUDA, or GPU accelerated. Yeah, so it's also really, really easy to use. Um, it's all based on vectors, or a lot of it's based on vectors, so just like STL. Uh, except in Thrust, we've got two different sorts of vectors. We've got host vectors and device vectors. And host vectors are stored in system memory. That's your CPU vector. Pretty similar, I guess, to the um, regular STL uh, vectors, which would, of course, be a host vector, you know. <laughs> uh, but we've also got device vectors in uh, Thrust. So you want to include your headers. So there's a couple of headers. We'll have a look at setting up these um, projects at the end. Uh, but I have noticed that there's a bit of a problem with... Um, Oh, down here. Look at this. Yo! <laughs> Yo might have to add the CUDA include path to your project's headers. Oh, to your project's uh, header paths. Yeah, Yo might have to. Uh, so this is the uh, includes just here for the vectors. Um, Alright, so the first thing that we should look at is uh, just defining a vector. So you want to use the uh, fully qualified names here. So thrust colon colon host vector. Uh, just to save confusion uh, between the STL vectors. Yeah, so uh, a host vector is um, yeah just defined with host vector and then you give it a type in uh, triangle braces. You give it a name and then you give it the number of items that you want, so 100 in this example. And you can also define a device vector just as easily. So this is really cool. Um, this is going to do a CUDA malloc in the background. Uh, but something like this, thrust, thrust, <laughs> thrust colon colon device vector float is going to give me a device vector of floats. Uh, I'm going to call it DV and it's going to have 25 items. Yeah, so easy as that. Uh, the other thing that you can do is um, set the items of your vector to some initial value. So you can pass an extra argument to that um, yeah, initial um, define of your vector. Uh, right here, for example, sets up a host vector of integers. Uh, there's 100 integers, that's the first parameter, and they're all set to 25. I don't know why I put a, <laughs> a float there for an integer vector, but yeah, I think you get the point. So that should just be 25. Um, the other really nice thing for us, really convenient thing, is that memory management is automatic. So you don't have to delete these vectors. Yeah, it's all automatic. Alrighty, moving along. Accessing elements is really, really easy. Um, you can use the what would you call this, the array indexing operator? Yeah, to access either device vectors or host vectors. So just here I've got a bit of an example of accessing um, an element from a device vector, element number 15 from my uh, device vector of integers. Once again, for some reason, <laughs> I 
I've put 23.4 as a float as my initial value to an integer vector. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, obviously thinking about 23.4 for some reason. Um, but what you should be aware of is that that is actually um, a CUDA mem copy uh, device to host just there. Uh, implicit there. So it's not going to be particularly fast. You want to kind of limit the um, yeah, the number of uh, element accesses and things like that with device vectors because there is a CUDA mem copy in the background. Uh, don't forget that. Uh, also, this is really, really cool. So you can actually copy from a device vector to a host vector or vice versa uh, really, really quickly just using the equals operator. Yeah, so there's a CUDA mem copy there as well. Don't forget that. It uh, won't necessarily be as fast as just you know accessing host vector elements or something like that. But uh, it's pretty convenient code-wise. Yeah, just the equals operator. Um, or you can use the um, thrust copy algorithm. Yeah, with your iterators. So the, the the iterators are still available. We still got things like begin and end iterators. Yeah, so you can use thrust copy as well to copy uh, elements from one vector to another. Very cool. Okay, adding and removing items is as simple as it was in uh, regular STL for C++. We just use push back and pop back. Yeah, so here's a bit of an example of that. I just push back to a host vector, which I've conveniently not set up. Um, yeah, it's just an example though. So push back 1230 is going to push back the integer 1230 to uh, a host vector. Uh, you don't need to call them HV and DV, obviously. Um, I've just done that for example. Um, and we've also got um, push back to a device vector, which is just as easy. And I happen to use hv.back there, but you don't have to. You know, that could just be an integer. <laughs> uh, then I just pop them, yeah, one after another, for no reason at all. Yeah, so push back and pop back is how you add and remove items from a vector. Same as STL. Okay, but moving along, this is where uh, thrust really comes into its own. So we've also got the uh, algorithms, things like sorting. Um, yeah, you want to include the thrust sort.h header, and uh, you should be right as rain. So this is just an example of sorting a list of integers on the device. On the device, sorry. And um, what I've done here is use the generate algorithm to generate a random number of integers. So on a host vector, that's just going to call this uh, random function here, which uh, returns a random integer from 0 to 99. And uh, then I've copied that uh, host vector to the device. Uh, I've used thrust sort uh, to sort that device vector. That's going to be an unstable sort, I believe. Uh, there is also stable sort. Uh, then I've copied it back to the host and printed them out. Yeah, just to make sure that the uh, device is actually sorting like it should. So thrust sort is going to sort those 100 items uh, using a GPU accelerated sort. Very, very cool. Okay, and the other thing we'll look at today, there is a lot of algorithms uh, that Thrust can actually do, but we're just looking at a few simple ones today. Uh, we'll look at summing, so sum reduce it's called. Uh, if you ever need to get sort of a single value from a, an array of items, um, they call this a reduce algorithm. Yeah, so sum reduce is to sum all of the items in an array. Uh, anyway, what you want to do is uh, include the reduce header uh, in your code and yeah, here's a bit of an example of sum reduce. So this example just here is pretty much the same as the last one, except uh, instead of using random numbers, I've generated uh, a sequence on the host um, in the host vector. So what's it going to do? This sequence just here is going to generate um, a sequence of integers from one to a thousand, and then I use uh, thrust reduce to um, sum all of those items. So that should give you, in theory, that should give you. Um, what, 1,000 divided by 2 multiplied by 1,000 plus 1. Yeah, if it's, if it's working. <laughs> and I print that sum out just to make sure that the GPU is actually summing or sum reduce. Okay, but here we've got a bit of a coding example. So uh, I'll have a bit of a go at this. Um, hopefully you can have a go as well. Uh, but what I might do first of all is um, just have a quick look at how to set up a project to use Thrust because... Um, yeah, it might just help. So we've, we've got to go through setting up a basic CUDA project first to use Thrust. Uh, create a Thrust. Okay, so what I'll do first of all over here on my new project in Visual Studio 2012, uh, I might include my build customization. 
Uh, CUDA 6 is out. Download CUDA 6 if you've not got it. There's been big changes. Okay, so that's my build customization. I might add a new item. I'll call it uh, main.coo. Click OK. I uh, might include uh, IO stream. And I might be using namespace std and int main and return zero. So that's pretty much just a standard little C project there. Uh, the next thing I might do is um, make sure the linker is linking to kudart.lib. So kudart.lib. Uh, that's the CUDA runtime. What happened there? That disappeared. <laughs> what? Can I say kudart.lib, please? Yeah, that's better. Uh, it used to be that you'd have to set up your CUDA uh, library paths, but they seem to be fixed. Uh, but what is a problem on this computer? I don't know if it'll be the same on yours, but the uh, include directory for CUDA doesn't seem to be working on my machine, so I'll have to set that up. Uh, you just go to VC++ directories and then edit. Uh, you click the little folder, then the dot, 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 and you find your um, CUDA include path. So that's going to be probably the same on my machine as it is on yours, but I don't know. So C uh, drive on my machine, that's the main um, the main system drive, and we've got uh, NVIDIA GPU Computing Toolkit, then CUDA version 6, or whatever version you're using, and include. So there's the thrust uh, include folder just there. Yeah, but you don't actually go into the thrust include folder, just stop at include and select folder, OK, and apply. Um, the other thing that I might do before we get coding is just change my compute capability to 2 and apply, OK. Alright, so now we should be ready to start coding a bit of thrust. Let's have a look. So the first question, create a thrust device and host vector called DV and HV. Um, okay, so the first thing, when, when we um, want to use a device and host vector, we want to include the uh, thrust uh, headers for those. So device underscore vector dot H, that's the one. And I might just copy that. And the host underscore vector as well. Uh, okay, so I'll call it DV and DH, uh, thrust. Um, so you don't want to do the old um, using namespace thrust, uh, just in case it conflicts with uh, the STL algorithms. You know, a lot of them have the same name, so just be careful about what namespaces you use. Uh, it's safest just to use fully qualified names, but I mean, there's no rules. You can, <laughs> you can do whatever you need to do in the end. Um, anyway, device vector. Uh, it's an int, and I'll just call it dv, and I'll set it to zero. So it's going to have zero items in it initially, and the other one is a host vector. Um, HP. Save that, and I might just hit play to make sure we're rolling so far. Okay, it's taken a little while, probably linking like crazy to all of these uh, really excellent thrust libraries. Yeah, it seems to be working so far. Okay, so add five ints to the host vector using rand. So rand is just a um, regular C++ function. Uh, using pushback. Pushback is a thrust uh, vector method. Um, so what do we want to do? hv dot uh, pushback and rand mod 100. Therefore, int i equals 0 because of the i being less than 5, and you know your i plus plus. Uh, okay, so that should add 5 integers. Um, they're not actually going to be in the range 0 to 100. These will be in the range from uh, 0 to 99. So maybe I'll just... There we go. That's going to give us um, yeah the possibility of uh, selecting 100. Slide 6. Why is it... Oh, who cares? Um, okay, so the next question. Uh, copy the host vector to the device vector. Well, this is very easy. We can say uh, dv equals hv. Yeah, so there is a CUDA malloc going on in the background there. Or not a CUDA malloc, sorry, a CUDA mem copy from uh, de host to device. So it won't be particularly fast. 
but once we've got our vector on the device, well, some of these algorithms will absolutely fly. Uh, so that's that question. That's easy as that. Uh, sort the device vector. Okay, so sorting uh, is another algorithm. Uh, you should include the thrust sort header, soft header, yeah, the thrust sort header. Uh, some of these algorithms you actually don't need a header. Yeah, so maybe reduce or something. I'm I'm not sure, but it's it's best to include the headers anyway, uh, I suppose. But sort um, and what do we want to sort? STR um, sort. Uh, okay, so we want to sort from dv.begin all the way to dv.end. So you can just use your begin and end iterators there in the sort algorithm, which is lovely. Uh, that should sort the device vector. We might as well just print that out though to make sure it's working. So for int i equals that, well because of your i being less than 5 and your i++, plus plus, we might just see out um, item uh, that is um, dv i handle. Uh, we'll just make sure it's sorting the um, vector there. So this is going to be slow, you know, never never actually iterate and print out the uh, items on a device vector. You want to copy them to a host vector first, but for this example it should be good. Um, I'm hoping that the uh, device sorts properly. Fingers crossed. Oh, it's painful because it takes so long to build. Oh, I mean, it doesn't take that long. Uh, might have to step again. Item 0 is 38. Well, that's good. Are you going to give me the rest of them? 41, 72, 80, and 85. Yeah, so they've been sorted on the host, which is really, really good. Um, you will find that the um, step through uh, doesn't really work that well with Visual Studio. You know, the um, device code is not actually um, sitting where it looks like it's sitting in your coo file. So uh, debugging is a little bit strange, but never mind. It's sorted it anyway, which was the point of the example. So the next trick. Uh, the next trick in my amazing bag of tricks is uh, sum reduce. Okay, so sum reduce is another uh, algorithm, and we don't want three kin lewd. Uh, we want to include uh, include your header, which is uh, reduce dot h. Uh, if we ever get time, we should have a look at um, a sum reduction using plain old. Uh, CUDA because it's not it's not as easy as a one-liner. Uh, it's an interesting topic, but um, I might say float and sum. Yeah, I'll call it float and sum. And I might get rid of this um, loop up here to print out the values. We don't care about that anymore. Uh, and what are we doing? Thrust, reduce, and uh, the same parameters as before. You just pass what you want to reduce as iterators. So dv begin to dv end. And uh, that should sum the five items in the uh, vector on the device. So that's uh, going to be pretty quick, hopefully. And the final thing that we want to do is print out the average. So average is, and the average is going to be that sum divided by the number of items, which was 5.0 end all. And there's no decimal there. Uh, okay, so that's the final question. Let's see what we come up with. Hopefully it should be something around uh, 50, I guess. Um, we've picked five random items in the range from 0 to 100, so it should be yeah, about 50 for the average. Taking a while again. Uh, there we go. So the average is 63.2. Uh, it sounds pretty good to me. I mean, it's not 50, but um, yeah, it's not too far off it either. So that's not proof that the um, device actually uh, performed a sum reduce on the on the items of the array, but it's pretty good indication that it did. Um, all right, so that's just a general introduction to um, Thrust, the Thrust library. Yeah, it's um, CUDA version of uh, STL. Thanks for watching all. See ya.